Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We are in the kitchen. Again, I am very excited about this video because if you follow me on Instagram or on Snapchat, you may remember a couple of weeks back, I asked which one of four videos you guys wanted to see the most on this channel next. And this was the one that most people voted for. So I'm happy to finally, you know, get it out there. Now, before I kind of jump into the video, I do want to say, if you are not here for the explanation as to, you know, how I meal prep, how it came about, how we do things in the K household, don't worry, I've got you. I have a timestamp right up here so you guys can fast forward to the cooking and skip the chats at the start. So when I got married in 2015, I jumped into marriage wanting to be this super woman wife. You know, the type that goes to work and also comes home, throws it down. Growing up, we were so blessed with food. My mom cooked all the time. She was known in the family as being an amazing cook. And I wanted to emulate that, you know, in my married life. So I would get back from work and be making the likes of shepherd's pie, asaro, and lasagna. All of these fancy, fancy meals that y'all know don't take five minutes to make. <laughs> and so I would be making these meals and it was all good and well to begin with guys. But after three or four months, I was just like, nobody told me that, you know, this is how it works and that this is no fun. I really stopped enjoying cooking and cooking was something that I had enjoyed before. And so I sat down, I shared my frustrations with um, Lou, and he was just like, you know, I don't want you to be distressed. How can we, you know, solve this issue? And we both decided to use a food planner going forward. And that food planner has been a huge lifesaver, a huge lifesaver in this marriage. Now, there were two reasons why cooking was stressful for me at the time. First and foremost, poor planning when it came to monthly food shopping. I would buy the things I would think that we would eat, but in terms of what I was making, quite often I wouldn't have the ingredients at home. So I'd have to be doing supermarket runs several times during the week, which I'm sure you guys can imagine was quite tiring. Second of all, because we didn't have this food planner and I wasn't planning properly with my monthly food shop, I found myself pretty much every day at work going through the following thought processing. Okay, what are we going to eat tonight? We had beef yesterday, so we can't have beef today. Maybe I'll make something that's seafood based. Oh, do we even have seafood? Okay, we don't have seafood, we don't have prawns, I'm going to go to the supermarket. And I would find myself thinking about what we were making every day, getting stressed about it, deciding whether to go and do a food shop during my lunch break or after work, and then coming home to cook. So the food planner really, really, really saved us and I would highly recommend it. It doesn't have to be boring, it can be so exciting and we still eat different things every day. So where meal prep comes in is one day I made a meal, you know, according to the food planner and I made too much food and so I packed it away for us to have for lunch the next day and I remember that lunchtime feeling so good because I was like, wow, I really enjoyed what I ate. It was fried rice, by the way, it was so good. <laughs> it was so delicious. So I really enjoyed what I ate and I loved the fats and this is the jebel in me. I love the fact that I had saved a good five to six pounds on food because usually if you work in central London, you will know food in central London can be quite expensive. I can, some days I would spend as much as 10 pounds on, on lunch. So I was really proud of how much I'd saved. And so I decided that, you know, I would incorporate meal prep into our food planner at the weekends, you know, take maybe one or two hours to make a few dishes that would make us a meal for every day of the week and help both myself and hubby save money at work. So that is how meal prep came about. Now in terms of what I'm going to be making today, first up we have some jerk tilapia fillets with garlic buttered mash and sautéed spinach. Second, I'm going to be making some vegetable vermicelli with chicken wings, and last but not least, some prawn kale stew with some rice. So let's get straight to cooking. Okay, so the first meal I'm going to be making is my garlic buttered mash, jerk tilapia fillets, and some sauteed spinach. 
To kick things off, I'm marinating two tilapia fillets with my favorite jerk seasoning of all time. Guys, this stuff is the bomb. It is so, so delicious, full of flavor. And to top it off, it is vegan. Yes, all natural, everything. I'm actually gonna be using it twice in today's video. So once I'm done marinating, I place the two fillets into a baking tray, and then I'm just gonna pop them into the oven to cook for a few minutes. Whilst the fish fillets are doing their thing in the oven, I move on to the potatoes. One thing I love about meal prep is it doesn't matter the order in which you make the different parts of your meal. Everything's gonna go in the fridge or the freezer, so it's pretty much all the same. After I finish peeling the potatoes, I like to chop them into smaller pieces just so they cook a little bit faster. I'm really not trying to be in the kitchen for too long, so anything that speeds things up is all good for me. Finally, I just crush, I think it was two to three garlic cloves into the pot of water with the potatoes so that I can achieve the garlicky taste that I want. Next, it's on to the sauteed spinach. I don't do anything fancy here except sweat some onions in this pan and then add a few handfuls of fresh spinach into the pan as well. One thing I didn't mention is we usually have this dish with broccoli, so I kind of randomly decided I wanted to try spinach instead and I completely forgot that spinach wilts like crazy, so I actually ended up going in with a few more handfuls and eventually used the entire bag of spinach and this is what we were left with. It was just about enough. Last but not least, once the potatoes are nice and soft and cooked, I pour some of the water out and add a tablespoon of butter. I already seasoned the potatoes, by the way, with a little bit of salt whilst they were cooking, but didn't capture that on camera. Then I go in with my wooden spoon to mash the potatoes. I do have a masher, but I don't know, am I the only one that prefers using a wooden spoon? I just find it to be a lot easier. But yeah, and then I realized whilst filming this, I forgot my splash of milk, but nevertheless, the potatoes still turned out to be really, really delicious. And that is pretty much it, guys. I put everything into these plastic takeaway containers and that is it for meal one. On to meal number two, vegetable vermicelli with some chicken wings. Now this clip may look a little weird guys, but you are not crazy. I am indeed cleaning chicken with rubber gloves on, but I promise it is not because I'm bougie. Hear me out guys, I really don't like hairy chicken. And so I figured a while back that if I wear gloves, the friction from the gloves would help me to remove the hairs on the chicken more easily. And it really actually works. I do know that some people who own gas stoves use fire to burn hair off, but we have an electric stove and I personally find this method to be a lot safer and faster. As for the chicken seasoning itself, I mentioned I'd be using this bad boy again. So I'm just going in with some of the Dunn's River Jamaican jerk seasoning to marinate the chicken. And I'm just mixing the seasoning in as you do. One thing that I also love to do is go in with a knife and poke at the chicken a little bit, which opens it up and will allow for the marinade to seep further into the, the chicken flesh and make it more flavorsome. Once I'm done with the marinating, I lay the chicken wings out onto an oven tray, which I've lined with some foil, and I've also lightly greased the foil with some oil. I really like to use foil, it definitely helps to reduce the amount of washing I have to do. And yeah, then I just place the tray into the oven and set it on the fan setting. But closer to the time that the wings are ready, I will switch things up to the grill setting so that I can kind of brown the outer skin of the chicken. For the vermicelli, I start off by sauteing some onions in this wok pan kind of thing I've got here. And a few minutes later, I will add some broccoli to the mix as well as some defrosted frozen vegetables and the real MVP, my scotch bonnet peppers because I love me some spice. To season, I'm going in with one Maggie cube as well as some light soy sauce and oyster sauce. 
Then I mix everything together before going in with the vermicelli. And from here on, it honestly takes maybe what five minutes to cook everything. When it's all cooked and good to go, I will dish everything out into the takeaway containers and then top it off with the chicken wings. And that's meal number two. On to the final meal, meal number three, prawn kale stew and rice. To make the stew base, I'm using some red peppers, scotch bonnet and onion. I'm going to chop these up nice and small and place them in the blender, but only blitz them and not blend them because I'm not trying to have a soup like consistency. I do want the stew to kind of be quite thick and have that thick texture to it. So next I add some oil to the pan. I am using more oil than I usually would, but that's because this stew is kind of like a semi-fried stew. So yeah, more oil is required. Then I add the mix and I let it sit for five to seven minutes. And this recipe guys was inspired by the amazing Food Ace. She is a food blogger and she has a video dedicated to her kale recipe. It's so friggin delicious. So please do check out her channel and send her some love. So after a few minutes, that's when I go in with the seasoning. I'm using three individual chicken gnaw cubes. So if you usually use the double unit pack, that's 1.5 of those and half a crayfish seasoning cube. Then again, I'm gonna let this cook for a few minutes before then adding some pan fried prawns. And shortly after that, I will add the kale. At this point, I also reduce the heat so that the kale just has some time to really soak up and take in the flavors from the stew. I'll leave this with the lid on top for maybe five to seven more minutes. And that is pretty much all it takes. This is my favorite meal of all three. It is so, so tasty. And that is it guys for my meal prep. Everything I have made will make four meals for myself and hubby. So eight individual packs of food. I don't make five packs of food for Monday to Friday because I like to have one day where you know you can maybe go to lunch with your colleagues so yeah that is it I hope you've enjoyed if you want to see more of these let me know and have a blessed week ahead